So in this review, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down each of the different tests we performed to detect the presence of macromolecules in our different solutions and give you various details that you need to know about each. To actually see the colors I'm talking about, you probably should watch the protocols where I show you reducing sugars, starches, and proteins. Okay? So first and foremost, macromolecule we're testing for Okay, then we're going to do detection agent followed by positive control. Then we're our positive coloration we expect to see followed by our negative control. negative color, and last but not least, any additional steps that distinguish that particular test from the test that we've done previously. Okay, so first and foremost, we looked at the carbohydrates, and we looked at two different types we detected what are known as reducing sugars, and then we also detected starch. Then we did a lipids test. This is a little different from the other detection tests that we performed. And finally, we detected the presence of proteins. Okay, so I'm just going to go through each of these and show you what we used and if there were any additional tests or steps. So, for reducing sugars, our detection reagent or agent was called Benedix. And it contained copper sulfate, which had a very, very healthy blue color to it. Reducing sugars are sugars that have what's known as a free carbonyl group. Okay, and you learn this functional group in your lecture. And the oxygen from that free carbonyl group actually reduces the copper in the Benedicts, creating what's known as copper one oxide. And this copper one oxide has a brownish reddish color. So our positive color here was a brownish red or reddish brown, depending upon what you saw. The negative color is the color of the Benedicts. And that color, of course, was a blue color. Now, the positive control for this. You had four different solutions that you technically used as your positive controls. Positive controls are solutions that we know contain whatever macromolecule we were hoping to analyze. So in this experiment, what you were attempting to do was to determine do those six solutions, milk, sports drink, lemon lime soda, baby formula, chicken broth, or egg, contain reducing sugars, starch, or proteins? Your positive controls were the solutions that you knew contained or were classified as reducing sugars, starch, or proteins. Okay? So typically reducing sugars are going to either be monosaccharides or in some instances disaccharide, but not polysaccharides. Okay. And the monosaccharide that we chose as our positive control was glucose. So the glucose solution, when you placed it with the Benedicts, gave us that nice brownish red color. Okay. Now for your negative control, your negative control is similar to your positive control, except it's something that we know will always test negative and will always give us that negative result. Okay, so thinking about what could have been your negative control, what solution do we know does not contain reducing sugars, starch, or proteins? Let's not draw from any of these controls here, the positive ones, the glucose or the starch or the egg albumin. Let's not draw from those. Let's think of a solution that we use in everyday life that we know doesn't contain these 
particular molecules. And the solution you, could, you should have come to was water. Water is a great negative control. All right? So we add Benedict's to our glucose and to our water, and it gives us these colorations. And then you could take one of your six solutions, like say the sports drink, add it with Benedict's and see if you get one of these two results. If the sports drink showed that brownish red color, then you have a positive result, which means that sports drink contains reducing sugars. If it stays blue, it means the sports drink doesn't contain reducing sugars. But in this particular test, there's one additional step. We actually need to heat or boil the test tube. So in your reducing sugars test, when we're using Benedict's, we boil the test tube so that the reaction will occur. If you don't boil your test tube, the reaction doesn't occur, and you're left sitting and staring at test tubes that all appear to have negative results in them. Okay, so keep that in mind. For this particular test, reducing sugars, you have to boil the test tube. All right, so now let's look at starch. So for starch, the detection reagent is iodine. The positive control, that is what we knew would test positive for starch, just so happened to be a starch solution. So we used a solution where we had placed starch into it because we know that solution contains starch. Remember, again, your controls are meant to be positive results. Okay, In terms of your positive control, you know it contains whatever it is you're looking for so that you can then compare it to those other experimental solutions. In the presence of starch, this iodine starch mixture gives us a bluish black coloration. Typically, you're also going to see some form of crystals or something like that kind of aggregate or build up on the sides of the tube as you agitate and shake it. So as you shake up your positive control, you should kind of see some sediment on the sides of your test tube. Negative control, again, what doesn't have starch in it? Well, it's going to be water. And when you have that negative result, you are actually going to see probably a brownish, maybe reddish, maybe even a yellowish color. Okay. Now, this brownish red, you'll notice the problem here, and a lot of students get confused, between the negative result here and the positive result here. And I will tell you the big difference between these two and the way you can always tell the difference between Benedict's positive result and an iodine negative result is in your ability to see through the solutions. A positive reducing sugars test is opaque, which means very little light can move through it and you really can't see through it. Okay. While that iodine mixture is typically translucent, so you can hold it up, and even though it has a brown tinge to the world, you can actually see through that solution. Now, one other place to be careful is that the copper oxide that is formed in a positive result for a reducing sugars test can actually set and settle on the bottom of the test tube, making the solution appear clear but when you agitate it, it then turns again the whole solution, that opaque brownish red color. And then for the starch test here, there's no additional step. All right, now, you didn't test any of those six solutions for lipids. Instead, you looked at the general properties of lipids. Okay, so we added lipids to a test tube of water, and we noticed that due to the hydrophobic nature of lipids, that it separated, they separated from the water and actually floated on the top. We still added a detection reagent, though, to better visualize this. That detection reagent, or agent, was called Sudan 4. It was this reddish color, and it typically associated with the lipids. Okay, now for the positive control here, what you use to analyze lipids was vegetable oil. You drop some vegetable oil in that test tube with the water. If the oil was present, that Sudan 4 associated with the oil, and what you wound up with was a layer of red 
on top. Okay. So the sedan four associated with all the oil which was floating on top of the water, and you had this nice dark red band on the top. Okay. For your negative control in this particular exercise, in place of that oil, you added water. And then you added Sudan 4 to a test tube that was full of water. And you should have seen kind of a pink throughout the test tube. Okay, so if the oil was present, you got that nice developed red band on top. If it was not present, then the Sudan eventually kind of moved through and you got this pink that was dispersed throughout the entire test tube. Even though Sudan 4 typically acts in a very hydrophobic kind of manner. Does not like to uh, associate with water if it can help it. Okay. Or at least has a very low affinity for water. And the additional steps in the lipids test, you technically did fill your test tubes with 10 milliliters or I think halfway with water. Um, so you did fill your test tubes halfway with water before you added it. So let's do fill, test tube, halfway with water. Okay, so we filled it halfway with water. And then we added either the oil on top or the additional water on top. Again, we did not perform this test on our six solutions. We simply did this as a standalone experiment to analyze lipids. Okay, and finally, proteins. Our detection agent here, you've used before in the spectrophotometry lab, it's called Biuret. Biuret specifically identifies or is used to identify molecules that contain peptide bonds, which proteins do. A dipeptide is when two amino acids form a peptide bond. And amino acids, of course, are the building blocks of proteins. Our positive control for this, egg albumin, and in terms of remembering what happens when we have a positive for proteins, alliteration will be our friend. The positive result for proteins is going to be purple. So if it's purple, it's a positive result for the detection of the proteins. Our negative control, again, is going to be water. Okay. The negative coloration, biuret is blue. In the presence of water, that biuret remains blue. So blue is our negative because there are no proteins in our negative control and there were no additional steps. So this chart gives you a nice set of information to follow in terms of remembering the positive and negative results as well as the positive and negative controls that we constructed to help us detect and determine if there were these macromolecules present in those six unique solutions. And then of course with the lipids, we did a standalone experiment to see how they reacted, or at least how they behaved in the presence of water in that test tube. Okay? And we looked at their chemical properties and what happened when you place these hydrophobic molecules inside an environment that had a lot of water. Okay? So use this information here for the positive and negative coloration. Use, use that in conjunction with the video protocols so that you can then know what this brownish red color looks like compared to this brownish red, or what this bluish black color looks like, or what this purple color looks like compared to this blue. Okay, so that's it in terms of the review for the different types of macromolecules as well as how we detect them and the colors that we're looking for as well as their controls.